Gut. Yes, before uh, before we start, uh, perhaps I can um, also be before we speak about football. And you all know how important football is, and uh, sometimes it seems to be the the most important uh, topic in the world. But um, if I'm really honest, more important is also the human being. And uh, obviously, we had a more or less like a shock news during uh, during this week with. Um, yeah, the retirement and the announcement of, uh, of Stuart Ellis and I uh, want to take uh, also the opportunity to, um, yes, pay a tribute and, and also to say thanks a lot for everything to, to Stuart in the name of our whole group because, um, yes, sometimes a human being who is not playing each and every uh, game is not that much in the spotlight, but he was pretty much in the spotlight in... Uh, in our group and uh, he's a pretty integral and uh, key part of, of our group and obviously it was also quite emotional for all of us in the last days also to, to learn to know that he has made the decision obviously you could sense it a bit in the, in the last weeks when there were a few setbacks and uh, in um, um, yeah in this rehab way and also with his, uh, with his body and um, but once the decision is finally there, and he announces this. It's, it was quite emotional, and also also for us because we don't lose just a great player, but uh, also an unbelievable uh, human being. And I have to say, I'm I'm a bit uh, sad that I was never allowed to send uh, Stuart on the pitch uh, as a manager, as as my player, because uh, once I signed a contract here, it was also one of the um, things I was really looking forward to, to also to, to work, for example, with Stuart because I knew what a fantastic player he was. It was always difficult also to prepare my former teams. Um, yeah, also against the side with Stuart Dallas because I think he was a fantastic, fantastic player. I was always respectful when I had to play against him and I uh, would have loved uh, to send him out also in, uh, in our shirt and, and uh, yeah, as, uh, as his manager. Um, but I also have to say that I feel really blessed and I'm really grateful that I'm at least allowed uh, to call myself to be one of the managers uh, with, uh, of, uh, of Stuart because obviously he was definitely also my player and will also in my mind and my heart always be my player. And um, I also learned more about him as a, as a human being. I have to say he was an unbelievable and fantastic player, but he was and is even a even a better human being and it's unbelievable um, yeah how he acts and interacts with the with the guys and he's still so important also for our for our spirit and uh, for our group I'm working here for this month more or less than, since nine and a half months and uh, he's doing this more or less uh, same amount but uh, of uh, of years and uh, what he has done for the for this club is so much um, so much more than what I have done, for example, in, in nine and a half months. So he's a real, uh, real legend of this club, and, and uh, real, he's a real deal. And I have to say, so um, he deserves all the praise and, and all the spotlight, not just for the way he played and what he has done for this club during difficult times, during good times. He has led with his quality, but also with his personality, this club to the highest highs with promotion and uh, also a fantastic first season back back in the Premier League but he was also there when the uh, going gets tough and he was always there with the highest identification for this uh, for this club and even right now he's there for the boys and, and gives hints and recommendations and it says a lot about his character once he came to the group in order to speak about um, yeah more like more or less his decision uh, that the main topic was not just to speak about him as a person. He spoke about our plans, what what our motivation was in the beginning of the season. That his fingers are crossed, also that we achieve what we want to want to achieve. So right now, even right now, he's still thinking more about the group and more about the club than about uh, about himself. And this says more or less everything about him as a as a person. And I um, really want to say a big, big thank you, and and I really feel blessed that I was allowed to to work for uh, at least in this uh, this year uh, together with with him. Our doors, arms, and hearts will will always be open, uh, open for him because uh, he is really a true uh, Leeds United uh, legend. And uh, yeah, we are blessed that we still have him uh, for a few weeks. So um, and yeah, the doors will always be open uh, that he is there and influences and gives his spirit. 
uh, also and especially to the to the young players and uh, just from my side and also in the name of of all of our staff and the whole team a big thank you for him and uh, let's enjoy the the next weeks also we're still having on on him on site and together with him thank you just on that subject how important is it you know it's 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 tense isn't it it's the end of the season there's a lot to play for just to have somebody like Stuart Dallas who has been there experienced promotion even if you can't get on the pitch, how crucial is it to just have him around for these remaining four games? Yes, it's uh, it's a key. Obviously, I would would prefer to have him uh, even available for the uh, for the games, but to have his experience and personality around the team and and also in the dressing room, he's always there before the game, after the game, calms the nerves down or motivates uh, when it's when it's necessary. It's especially important because we have a pretty pretty young group, and I think about. Um, our um, yeah, our players on the pitch. Once we finished uh, the last game with Chris Summerwell, 22, Matteo Joseph uh, on the pitch, 20 years old, Billy Ignonto just 20 years old, uh, Jorginho Rutter on the pitch, um, also in his early 20s, 21, I think, Archie Gray on the pitch, Ila Melier. So they are all young young lads, and then to have really like a proper Leeds, Leeds legend there who went through all this up and downs of the club who had the experience of uh, being involved in a promotion battle also to be successful involved successfully involved um, it's always uh, always important to have these guys around because um, you need obviously the the energy and the enthusiasm of the youth but also the experience of uh, of um, uh, of a bit more experienced players and once you have an experienced player and then also such a top class character uh, like Stu around it's it's always important Sadly, it's not a guarantee that we will succeed, but uh, it's definitely a good feeling to, uh, to have him around. It's been an interesting week. Leeds, unfortunately, drops points against Sunderland, but equally Ipswich and Leicester also dropping points this week. Is that a coincidence or is it symptomatic that the pressure is mounting? Uh, first of all, my, my attitude is uh, that you can't drop points. You just can win points. So the times when you drop points is, uh, is over. There are no minus points anymore. And for that, we, we gained one point. And uh, obviously, we would have preferred to, to make a big step with three points, but you always have to be respectful. And if you can't win a game, then you have to make sure that you're there with the second best result and uh, you win then one point. And uh, obviously, this uh, this game day brought us one point closer to the, to the top of the league, uh, made sure that with this important point, we also... Um, yeah, are still within one point with, with Ipswich, also protected a bit further on our, our advantage in comparison to Southampton. And um, even at, at this stage of the scene, so difficult also to deliver always, uh, always win after win after win. Um, yeah, because also the quality of the of the other opponents are not uh, are not bad. You also have to respect that sometimes a, a team plays and without pressure, with freedom, or the other way around when you face a side with fighting um, against relegation they fight with a knife between the teeth especially in the uh, in the end of the season it's always difficult and perhaps even a bit more difficult than on game day 30 uh, to uh, to gain three points and for that you always have to be respectful and to, to make sure that you don't underestimate also sometimes one point uh, obviously we wanted to win also the last game and then the first overriding feeling was also a bit disappointment but uh, like I mentioned uh, straight away after the game was also important not to lose the nerves not to lose this game with being open and conceding a counter-attack it was important to return back to have a clean sheet was the first um, after after three games we, we have conceded and this was also crucial and for that uh, I wouldn't underestimate this one point yeah obviously we had into each and every game in order in order to win it this is our DNA this is how I want my, my teams to play and I think you also could sense it but yeah when you have a day when you are struggling perhaps even a bit in, in order um, yeah to create many clear-cut chances and then you have also a day when obviously there are many key decisions and also obvious decisions go against you yeah sometimes you have to take a point and uh, for that um, was an important point and uh, we're looking forward to have the next chance to win one or even better three points uh, than tomorrow. Leicester play tonight. It seems that yourselves, Ipswich, Leicester will never all kick off at the same time. Will you actually watch Leicester away at Plymouth tonight? 
I'm not sure. Perhaps uh, part of the uh, of the second half is not that important because we have played uh, already two times against both teams, against Plymouth, even a bit more often due to the uh, cup competition. But we don't face them, so for that, it's not necessary to analyze them uh, even uh, even a bit more. And uh, obviously, I also can't influence. But uh, what happens on the pitch will be a, quite a long day today here at Thorpe Arch because. We go out for training. We have to prepare a lot also for, for tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure if I will, will make it uh, for the kickoff time uh, home on the sofa in front of the TV, perhaps for the last minutes. Yes, and perhaps uh, if I don't uh, follow then, what, what else is on the program? Perhaps Augusta, anyhow, um, the <laughs> Masters, uh, Tiger Woods, I think in good shape. Um, then probably I will ha also have a look on the, uh, on the, um, Leicester game, but I can't influence it that much, and for that, uh, I'm not over excited today. Do you expect the players will watch it tonight? They will definitely return uh, home a bit uh, a bit earlier than me, because obviously the best time uh, when to work in football is always the time when you when you play. Yeah, you just come in, have to make sure that you're there with proper training, you got proper nutrition, then you head home. So uh, the coaching staff or the staff around, they have to work. The players are leading a privileged life, so they will definitely make it. Um, obviously in time, but I'm also not too bothered if they concentrate just on our game tomorrow or they watch a bit of football. So there is no recommendation from uh, from my side. They are all mature and they can do what, whatever they want. But no, what I can guarantee is that no one of my players will be overexcited because we can't influence other results. So we are all pretty much focused in order yeah, to be then really switched on for tomorrow because we, we need to be at our best in order to give ourselves a chance to win the three points. And this is at all, all that matters. What do you expect from Blackburn tomorrow? Well, it's it's difficult to predict because each and every game is uh, is different. And also in this um, league, you can't compare uh, anything. So I'm pretty respectful of, of their quality in the in the offense. Uh, if you're not switched on against them, they can hurt each and every opponent yeah, because they have so many players who can make things happen. Obviously, a player in, in red hot form with Smolex during during the season with uh, so many so many goals, also um, a handful of uh, of assists. They are very very dangerous. So they have shown um, just a couple of weeks ago what they're capable to do. They were able to score five goals against against Sunderland and cut them a bit into pieces. Obviously, then uh, the other night was definitely then also a disappointing result for them, but. It uh, just makes sure that they will be perhaps even a bit more motivated to show reaction, and uh, they also need uh, need probably a few points in order to be not not really completely in danger. Um, so for that, um, I expect also a highly motivated uh, team who wants to show reaction, also at a at a ground where they have, yeah, let's be honest, nothing nothing to lose because after the last result, no one really expects uh, then really something that they will take Elland Road uh, by uh, by storm and and for that um, yes we are respectful and we know that we have to control them so if you allow them uh, to develop their game they are really really dangerous side because they they play a bit freestyle they play instinctively they have many many good football players and we have to make sure that we don't allow them to to be themselves on the pitch and that we dominate the game and this is the task then for tomorrow last one from me then team news how are you looking for tomorrow all right, all the players came through the last game, all are available also for, for Ethan. It was quite important uh, also to recover a little bit. So at the moment, everyone is in a, in a good shape. Also important to have a few more days for Vilignonto and also for, uh, for Connor Roberts to prepare after their uh, muscle injuries. They also came through the last game uh, without any problems for that. Um, yeah, I think we are in a much, much better position than we were perhaps uh, 10 days ago. And uh, for that, we're looking forward to have this game. Thank you very much. Good luck Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you. Daniel, you told us before that those Norwich draws you had at the end of that season, everyone panicked and felt like it wasn't going to be enough. Can you understand why Leeds fans might be a bit panicky, given that you're currently not in the top two and this season feels so unique at the top end? Yes, of course. This was one of the reasons why I signed a contract uh, for, this, uh, for this club. And... Uh, I really like how our supporters are, how emotional uh, they are in in, uh, in both ways, and this is, if I'm honest, also the one of the biggest challenges why I signed the contract because I was so interested to uh, to lead this club because I know which potential this club has and and how many um, emotions 
this club influences and and creates and uh, in uh, in both ways it's it's so difficult. I was never naive uh, when I when I signed the contract. I know in the last twenty years, uh, Marcelo had a pretty good spell, um, but apart from this, um, yeah, I'm here since uh, nine months. Meanwhile. Um, if you judge uh, more or less the managers in the last 20 years, apart from, from Marcelo, it feels already um, a good, good shift if you uh, survive for nine weeks uh, because everyone is so emotional and uh, for, this, for this club. And it's important that you lead this club also with, um, yeah, with being not like a flag in the wind and also to be convinced of what you're, what you're capable of. And, and um, we never take it personal and it just shows how much they care about them. So it will always be a club where, yeah, when you have a game day, there are whatever, 500,000 managers who have their, their own thoughts and they are all a bit overexcited. They are over the moon once, uh, once everything goes in the right direction. And sometimes, um, they are also, yeah, a bit nervous uh, when it doesn't go in, uh, in this way. And it's just important that you, once you want to lead this club, you have to understand this and yourself, you have to be calm. Yeah? No one can really explain, um, yeah, for example, when I think about the, the last game, um, I don't want to praise ourselves too much and, and I also like to stay humble and don't want to be in the spotlight, but I uh, also like the fact that we're playing, in terms of points at least, the best season in the history of this club. Uh, we are there with the best home record in the history of this club during this season. We are there by far the best uh, team in the second half um, of uh, of the season, sitting on position one, and there we have the the best home record of uh, of all teams. We have the best defensive record uh, of all teams. We are not relying on on one player, so we make sure that we trust the whole group. Uh, we share the goals, for example, uh, between between uh, several players. When I think about Joel Pirot, about Daniel James, about Chris Summerwell, Patrick Bumford, Willie Nyonto, Georgie Rutter, there's not just one main player so we don't rely on one player we show what this club is all about yeah? that no one is bigger than uh, than the side so we're living uh, Leeds United to really with we, we have created also a group with spirit with identification with being united um, and we have climbed more or less uh, the the ladder step by step yeah we, we spoke about this uh, this before um, if you want to play a perfect season, you have to do this step by step. The first season, don't want to bother you that much, but um, or bore you that much. But uh, the first step is always make sure that you don't struggle on the wrong end after relegation. Check. Make sure that you have a chance to finish in the top six. Check. Make sure that you then really finish in the top six. Check. Make sure that you finish in the top four to have the best possible solution for the playoffs because then you have the second leg at home. I would also say check already. And then right now, it's just the fifth step. Yes, once you are in this position, then you also want to promote by using the players or even better by automatic promotion. We are exactly in this uh, in this shape. And then, yeah, we're playing against the side. Sunderland dominate the first half. Don't allow them to have any chance. Dominate the game with 70% possession. One or two uh, crazy decisions from the referee uh, against us. Normally, Chris Somerville scores or there should be a penalty. Uh, and then it's half time, 0 nine, 0 nine. This point brings us into the top two. Yes, and you got the feeling the whole stadium is nervous and, and even booze around at, uh, at half time. But we don't take it personal. So this shirt, to wear the shirt as a player, it's the heaviest shirt in the, uh, in the league. And you have to, you have to enjoy it and you have to realize it uh, and relish it. And, and you have to know when you sign a contract what you're, what you're doing because this club means so much, uh, to, uh, to all the supporters and all the people who are c connected with them. And this is also a big strength of this club. Uh, it's, it's never easy, but, um, then you have to understand why, because everyone wants this club to succeed. Everyone wants this club to do so well. Yeah, we brought ourselves into a perfect position. Right now, everyone wants, wants also really to, to take the last step to speak about the perfect season. And it's so highly, uh, highly motivated. And uh, for that, I totally understand this, but it's also important that you don't uh, lead with, yeah, too much led by emotions. Also like the, that you stay calm and uh, also with fire in the heart, but also cool in the head and also to calm the players and the nerves of the players down because we're working with many, many uh, young players. And for that, on the one hand, I totally understand all the emotions. On the other hand, 
although I love the emotions, I have to make sure that my players are not too affected uh, about it and that we make sure that we are there with the best, uh, best possible outcome by also keeping our nerves. Some of those thousands of managers that you mentioned have made a talking point of your substitutions and the timing of them. When you look back at this season, have you ever second-guessed or, or analysed a, a decision to substitute or not to substitute and felt you should have done it differently or is it impossible because you don't know what the player would have done? Um, after each and every game, you analyse uh, what we have done, also pretty self-critical, what uh, we as a coaching staff or me as a manager uh, could uh, could have done better. Um, but the second topic is also, uh, also all right. Um, you never know. Yeah. So it's impossible to, to judge yeah, because you never know if you would have uh, played a game, um, yeah, for example, the last game with a completely different lineup or you substitute earlier or you substitute not at all. You never know yeah, if yeah, a different striker would have perhaps scored or if I should have let Petro Grimm for longer on the pitch yeah, because he would have scored in the, in the last minute. Um, or whatever, or you should have changed the, ba uh, the, the base formation. Um, you never know. Um, like I said, so it's also why we love this sport that much. Everyone can can have an opinion, but for me, it's just important that I totally trust uh, my players, the group of players. Otherwise, we wouldn't share, for example, that uh, that many goals. And uh, yes, if someone thinks, um, yeah, we should have be there with better decisions, I can't argue against this because I can't prove. Uh, the difference, uh, like I mentioned before, I like to like to stay humble and also to stay self-critical, and uh, I don't want to put myself into the spotlight. Um, like I mentioned before, so I think with staying humble, I love the statistics. I think I was nominated three times right now, or won three times the manager of the month. Um, I'm nominated for manager of the season. Um, we're playing the best season in the history of this club. We have the best defensive record. We have the best home record in this league. We have the best home record uh, in the history of uh, of uh, Leeds United uh, Football Club. We are there with 87 points after uh, 42 games. Uh, we share many, many goals. We have the best uh, goal difference. Uh, we have still the chance to play the perfect uh, season. Um, yeah, but it could be that uh, it's perhaps because of me that we are not there even uh, even better uh, in the uh, in the table, um, and we are already promoted. So it could be I can't argue against this because I can't can't prove it the different different way out. But one thing is also for sure: I'm, uh, I'm although I try to analyze each every game, and I also like to be self-critical, um, but I'm also not, if I'm allowed to say this in a humble way. I'm also not too nervous or too critical about the impact that I have uh, for, for our season so far. And um, yeah, the most important topic is I totally trust and back my players and uh, I've also managed this season um, or this league also a few times and you have a gut feeling. And the gut feeling uh, right now is um, we are up to um, yeah, create something special also in the, uh, in the last games and the gut feeling is that we allowed yeah, also to um, to look back on the season and speak about, okay, it was a quite successful season. That's just the gut feeling that I have. Um, yeah, we will see what the outcome is. Stuart's message to the players about the fact that they've got themselves into this great position and don't don't let it go now. Do you think young players really grasp what it is they've done and the position they put themselves in and the chance that they have and what it will mean if they go ahead and finish it off? Um, you know what I like sometimes also to to work with uh, with the young side that they don't uh, realize it at the moment in the moment when they're in and they don't think too much about it. So for that I always speak about that you need also this energy of the youth and the enthusiasm just to enjoy the road and not to think too much about oh what can we achieve and we can write our names in the uh, the history books uh, of this club uh, because sometimes otherwise you are too nervous and over motivated and over excited. Um, I think once you're a bit more experienced, a bit older in age, you think perhaps even a bit more about it, but you can handle it also in a better way because probably you've been there before also in, in, in similar situations. And I quite like the, the balance of it. So um, I don't think just because Stuart mentioned right now there is even more motivations there for the, for the, for the young players because everyone is so highly motivated to finish 
uh, as strong as possible and and uh, yeah also to to look back on a on a successful season so it's not like before there were players just 98% motivated right now because Stuart managers oh right now we found the last 2% so um, i totally back my players and also the mentality uh, of my players and um Yeah, I know that uh, that they are really greedy to be as successful as possible, and for that, yes, we're trying to do this. But it's still good that, yeah, we have also like legends around who wish us well and to support us and give the players also some trust and some belief. And for that, like I mentioned, I also liked uh, Stuart mes- uh, Stuart's message. Thank good. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.